right, time now for all things Gators, all things orange and blue. Dan Hicken and Frank Frangie. What's up, Hick? Uh, doing well, Frank. Good to see you. Uh, thank you to Southeast Orthopedic Specialist, sc-ortho.com, uh, for all your orthopedic needs in the Jacksonville area. A lot going on in Gainesville right now in the springtime. And, of course, everybody is focused on football. And just might start there in a quick overview of the uh, of the program. And, you know, most people, I think, would say, you know, they're in a better place. Billy likes to say it's built. That's one of his buzzwords. I, I hope he's right. And right. what happens? That's what kind of what it comes down to, really, is what happens starting you know, with Miami. Here's what I think. After watching the spring game, and I wasn't there, I watched it. Mm -hmm. I talked to a lot of people. I was there the week before. Uh, a couple things. Number one, I it's going to be hard because they have a tough schedule. We'll get to that in a minute. Dan, they look a little more the part. They look they, I'm not saying they look like Alabama or Georgia, but they just watching them run around, they look a little bit more like an SEC team. The roster looks more like that than it has in past years. Now, we'll see what that equates to. Uh, so that's one thing. Secondly, this is Graham, Mar this is Graham Murch's team. I don't think there's any debate about that. Mm -hmm. DJ Lagway is going to play some, but it's Graham Murch's team. And, and if there's one advantage they have over people is they have a returning quarterback. Miami's got a very good quarterback, but he's new to the program. Uh, Cam Ward, DJ Uyungle, who went to FSU, is new to the program. Uh, LSU's got a new starter. Uh, Florida's got a starter that has started a bunch of games. So we'll see how that plays out. So for, I'll get to the future in a minute. But for the team today, I think they look more the part than they have in the past. I think it's Graham Mertz's team. It's going to be a tough lift. I know that. But I feel better about what I saw on the field, even, even incrementally better, Dan, than I did in the past. I mean, I like what you're saying. I like where you're going. Ultimately, you know, you can talk to former players. You can talk to current players. You, you know, we don't have any problems off the field. Everything's been great down there. He's done a terrific job with every which way except the wins, and the wins got to come, and they got to come this year. So it's such an interesting year for Florida football, especially when you start bringing in the name Lagway. I agree with you about Mertz, um, but, you know, DJ Lagway, I mean, Billy Napier got two of the top 10 football players in the country to come to Florida after three straight losing seasons. That is an incredible move. And, you know, it seems even like they got more of the NIL figured out now. I mean, so they're definitely trending in the right direction. But then you come back to the schedule and nothing really matters what we say until they play ball uh, again, starting with Miami, because they got to win. They got to win early. They got to take advantage of Graham Mertz being a veteran. And they probably got to find some receivers along the way, too. And I'll tell you what. And, that, and now let me tell you what I'm hearing. OK, mm -hmm. what I'm hearing from people that I trust is that contrary to what fans think and certainly to what national media think, it's going to take a disaster for them to fire him. So I think there's this belief that, OK, six or seven wins, he keeps his job, five wins, he's out, boom, move along. Dan, I don't think it's that cut and dry. And I'm kind of glad it's not, by the way. I, I don't think it's that cut and dried. I think Billy Nate, I think they understand what he was taking on. I think they agreed when he got the job, they being the administration, Scott Strickland and company, Bill, Billy Napier, that it was going to be a rebuild. And, and I think he's going to get time. Now, the X factor is they've shown some dysfunctionality on the field. Yeah. He looked over Max as a coach too yeah. many times, the special team stuff, the, the delay of games, the poor use of timeouts. And that's got to get better. But in terms of the wins and losses and building the program, I think he's going to get his four years to build it. I, Dan, I don't know how you feel about that. I don't know how fan base feels about that. But from what I'm hearing, it's not going to his. He's going to be evaluated on more than wins and losses at least one more year, and that does, and that doesn't bother me. It really doesn't. I don't think. I think the last thing they need is firing another coach and another coaching search and another rebuild. And I hope they don't have it. Well, I agree, but I'll remind you of this clip uh, if they lose to Miami. And when we yeah. this on a Monday okay. after Miami, and when we're getting the just onslaught from Gator Nation, I mean, the, listen, they've, you know, at some point a good coach figures it out and wins, and it's time for Billy Napier, and I, I think he believes it's time too. So, yeah, I, I can't judge via wins and losses, et cetera, but you're being, I think you're being a little bit kind. Uh, well, and, and you might be right, by the way. I'm not yeah. saying you're wrong. That's what you're hearing. I, I, Scott Strickland may feel that way, but there's also uh, immense pressure and it's a different world now that we, we live in with, we watch college football 
And so it will be very interesting going forward. The 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 trump card, I think, for Billy is DJ Lagwood. You know, I think it's like, okay, well, you understand if I go, you know, he's probably gone too. And right. so that is uh it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting as this season unfolds. And man, I I think everybody who knows Billy Napier is rooting hard for the guy. He's a really likable dude, man, and he's done all everything the right way. Uh so hopefully he can he can get some wins. Yeah, and I'll, I'll say this too. Remember that, my, and you're right. The fallout if they lose to Miami, but remember this: that's a coin flip game, man. I know. That I that, know. that 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 is a. I know. <laughs> that's a coin flip. That that is a. The line will be Florida by two and a half, maybe, yeah. because they're at home. You know, I mean, and, and so so. But again, I'm not, and I'm not saying number one. I hope he doesn't get fired because of what I just said, the whole start over thing. But I'm also telling you what I hear. I think they believe. They believe he's doing the right stuff. There's a belief on that campus, Dan, that if somehow he gets to your four and five, he's going to make them a really good program. There's yeah. a, there's a belief there's there's a belief that that, that it's almost flipping back. There's so many coaches have been changed out and fired so quickly right. that you almost hear see the environment changing a little bit. You know, the Danny Hurley thing helped that. Danny Hurley, they were terrible when he got to UConn. They had two or three losing seasons. It took yep. four years to get to the tournament. And now they're the best program in college basketball. I'm not saying that's where Florida's headed, but I think more people, Eli Drinkwitz, they were terrible for a few years. Last year they were a top 10 team, and they're going to start this year as a top 10 team or a top 15 team at the least. So I think I almost feel like the landscape in college football is changing back a little bit to maybe we need to start quit firing our guys after two years. Yeah. And so, so we'll, we'll see if that affects Florida. Just don't let them convert a fourth and 18 in that first game. I know. Right? I know. Don't well, run. Well, and that's don't what's got to change. Drill for a field goal or don't have two or threes. Those little things are what will drive. I agree, I'm, I'm, I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you. But I also know the, the fan base, as you do. Yeah. And it will be, like I said, it's going to be extremely interesting yeah. going forward. But I, I'm excited. I, I choose to look at the positives. I, I, the negatives just drag me down too much. Me too. Me too. So, so we'll see what happens with football. It'll be fun to watch. Um, my guess is they're not completely done in the portal, but I don't. I don't expect there's going to be any wow guys. No. They, they got to. And we'll talk closer to the football season about this. They got to be better defensively. Yeah. They got to. They have to be competitive defensively. You know, it's funny. Everyone says offense wasn't the problem. Well, offense was ranked about eighth in the SEC. It wasn't exactly elite. No. But it wasn't as bad as that abysmal defense, so they got to get better there. That's yep, the thing. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's get to hoops a little bit there. Dan, are you following the hoop team at all? Do you, do you keep up with the hoop team since, since I'm the beat guy? You're the beat guy. I will say this. Uh, of course I do. I I was honestly, <laughs> and this is going to sound very hypocritical of me, because as you as I've always railed on on this thing, we're – about making the tournament, but I thought they were a better team than they got a bad draw with Colorado. Who's got like two guys going in the first round of the NBA draft. They got a bad draw and they lost that game. It was a heartbreaker. I thought they could have done more. I thought they were a second week team. So I was, I was disappointed in that. But other than that, I really like what Todd Golden's done. He's gone back to the portal again. He's, you know, we'll see, but the kid from FAU is a really good basketball player. And the other two got, he got the big guys to replace the guys who are leaving uh, he's got his formula. Now, one thing that they must get better at is playing defense. They cannot right. have these, hey, we gave up 53 in the second half, you know, games right. that they seem to have a lot of last year. I think that's what he went and got in the portal so far. Leah Martin, the kid you talked about from FAU, is an elite defender. He's an NBA-like defender. He's still in college because they don't know if his offensive game matches up yet. We'll see if it does or not. He's, a, he's more of a drive and dunk guy than he is stop and shoot threes. But he wants to handle the ball, which is why he's staying in college. And my guess is he becomes the point guard now. If Clayton stays, and I think he's going to, he, he's a really good two guard. But, but Martin is an elite defender. They did not have an elite defender on the team last year. Right. That's one of the reasons they got him. And the two big guys are shot blockers. Even even, even the, the, the 6'11", get Leo, I think is how you say it, from Washington State is more shot blocker than he is offensive player. Alexis blocks some shots. So, I think they went and found defense in the portal. Now, the question becomes, you still have to have – in this day and age, you got to shoot. Uh, I hope Martin shoots well enough if he's going to be on the floor a lot. Aberdeen will be on some. He's a streaky shooter. You know Clayton can shoot it. Can you shoot the ball well enough? And, and Condon's going to play more, and I think he'll become a pretty good shooter. But I, I'll tell you this. I, I Listen, I was a, I, I was on the, the, the pulpit saying 
people have to quit ripping on Mike White. People have to quit ripping on Mike White. I led the charge there. Well, this this guy's better. This guy's better. Mike White did not turn. Mike White will be fine at Georgia, whatever. But this guy's better. So it was the right move for him to leave and for them to go get Todd Golden. I I, I stand corrected on that one. So and I and I agree. Todd Golden is a guy that I'm telling you, he may take him to a Final Four. I I mean, he's my worry is like Billy. He's got NBA written all over him, and I don't want to look up and he's in the NBA in three years or at a bigger program or a more blue blue blood program. But I like where they are. I think Clayton's going to be back. I'm like you. I love Aaliyah Martin or Elijah Martin. I keep saying Aaliyah. Elijah Martin, uh, the kid from FAU. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chileo and Alexis, I think, are good additions. I think Condon's going to be a terrific player for them. Uh, and so I like, man, I'm excited. I, I, I said, I think basketball, I said this at the time, Dan. I think basketball gave Florida more fist bump moments. We haven't had any fist pump moments in a while, man. Yeah. And I thought Gator fan had some fist pump moments. I agree with you. They should have. They got a bad draw with Colorado. They got the ultimate bad break with Han Lockton getting breaking his leg. Yeah. Uh, the one, that's the last game you didn't need. The, the one game you didn't you needed him because it's a big team and that inside guy went nuts. I talked to Todd Golden a little bit uh, a week ago, off off record and on. And look, he's not going to say this publicly, and I get it, but. The official, the, with the, ter- the technical, it was, it was a mess, you know. And, and so everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. I talked to, I talked to Micah, too. Uh, I saw him. We were Spurrier doing a radio show. Micah was there. We talked for a few minutes. Um, it's going to be a long recovery, Dan. I mean, he broke his leg in half, essentially. <laughs> and that's hard for a 7-1 guy. But uh, but I like where that program is, and I, and I really do. I, I, I'm very excited about where I think Florida basketball is going to go. I think they're going to start the season as a top 15 team. When's the last time that happened? You know, when they started the season yeah. there. So I like where they're going. I do too. And and, and again, a tip of the cap to Golden and what he's been able to do. All right, baseball is not doing what we expected. There's a lot of reasons why, but one reason that it's it, that you can't use is, is Jack Caglione, who's the best college baseball player in the country. Georgia people keep screaming at me about this other kid, Condren, who's a great player. Condren, Condren, whatever, Condren. Uh, uh, unless he's pitching, Frank. Uh, he ain't the best. I mean, this kid is is Shohei Otani in college, and for the life of me, I, I dare I say, I, I almost think I want to want him to hit the next level, the professional level. Well, well, that'll be really interesting <laughs> because I think he's one guy you got to let him do both. You yeah. have to. You, you yeah. can't not. You can't have a guy. If you throw a hundred, you got to get a shot at a, at a pitcher. If you have regular exit velocities of 100, you got to get a shot at the hitter. Yeah. So I think he'll get. I think he's one guy that really will do both at the next level. But the team is bizarre that the yeah. team struggled this much. I, yeah. I and I think the real what really hurt them is the the old the lack of pitching. They they had a guy. The guy signs. They have a really good freshman. He gets hurt. Tommy John. Um, the other freshman, Liam Peterson, is a freshman. He's been up and down. Right. Um, Kate, Kate Fisher, the lefty who was so good mm-hmm. in the College World Series, came out of nowhere last year as a freshman and, and did so well in the fall that he earned Friday night status. And what, now he's pitching better now, but he wasn't very good. Right. And so the lack of – even in the midweek pitchers have been awful, which is why they lost all the midweek games, and then they lost their confidence. Um, look, they're a borderline tournament team. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm not sure they get in. I'll say this too, I, and I this see, I, I Sully's had a great approach. I mean, you can't argue with the results that the guys right. got. But I wonder this because I was looking right now. They took one of three up at Vanderbilt. They won the Caglione game, right? And uh, they're eight and ten, uh, I think, in the conference. Okay, uh, uh, Vandy and uh, uh, Georgia and these teams are like nine and nine, ten and eight. Right. But their records are 28 and 11, 27 and 13. Florida's 20 and 19. Right. Maybe, and I, again, how would he know this? But boy, they they messed up with these midweek games. I think if Florida was 8 and 10 and 27 and 13, Frank, it'd be a lot different. But getting swept by FSU is, is not the biggest issue. They're good, but uh, 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 losing to JU, and again, no disrespect to any of them, losing to yeah. Sets and whomever, uh, that's what ultimately is going to maybe doom Florida and maybe not get them playing. Yeah, you, you, and you can't go in and schedule worse teams, and that's no, what you have to play. you got to win um, those games, man. Yeah, but but, but, I'll, but I'll, I agree with you. Here's what happens. There's, of, of the 14 SEC teams uh, before Texas and Oklahoma joined, of the 14 teams that exist now, 
I think last year, 12 made the tournament, maybe 11. Mm -hmm. So you kind of expect everybody to get in, at least get into the 64. But I don't know about this year. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I think, I think, by the way, um, heritage does matter. It's not supposed to, but it does. Yeah, sure. And so if Florida can go on any kind of a run at all, they sneak in. I mean, uh, obviously super regionals out. I think a regional is now out. Yeah. I think now it's just, it's now it's just get to the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and hope you get to that Wake Forest Super, you know, yeah. that, I mean, you, you hope to be the third team in the Wake Forest Super is what is, is your best case now. And so hopefully they get in. Um, but or the Wake Forest Regional, I should say that was super Wake Forest Regional. Right. Um, but they got to get hot. Here's the problem. The league's so darn good. Tennessee's a top five team. Got to play them. Kentucky's really good. Yeah. Got to play them. Georgia is now ranked. They're ranked yeah. 23rd, 24th. You got to play them. Yep. It doesn't get easier. It's, nope. it's not like back in the day in football or, or whatever, you at least have a couple of the easy games to, that you can't fatten up on anybody. I think there's a chance they miss the tournament. And Frank, they that's have, unheard of missing they, the tournament. Frank, they have trailed in every conference game this year, 18 conference games. Wow. They have eight come from behind wins because they've been behind because they've wow. so poorly early. And they just, every game you look up and it's yeah. three to nothing. It's just tough. It's hard. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that every game. I didn't realize that, but they, but part of that's the pitching, the early pitching. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Is not, again, look, look. Other than tags on Sunday, but nobody's been automatic. Thanks, Frank, and uh, of course. Right. See you, man. Thanks, buddy. See you. All right, and uh, brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialist SC-Ortho.com for all your orthopedic needs. We'll talk to you next time, Frank Frangie and Dan Hickey.